Let them that hate thee flee from before thee. Hallelujah. 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 I'd like to welcome everyone to Kodesh Nation and to our Shabbat class. Brothers and sisters, lesson I'll be bringing forth, lesson and message that I will be bringing forth today, this Shabbat day, is entitled, Excellence or Mediocrity? Excellence or or mediocrity. Now, I think most of us know what excellence is. That if you are uh, an excellent person, that means you excel. You excel above and beyond the norm. Whereas if you're mediocre, mediocre just means you're middle of the road, you're average, you're just another brick in the wall, you just do more or less what the crowd does, just more or less what everybody else does. And just to give you an example of what I mean, let's take school children for example. Now, you have some students in school that you notice that when you get school textbooks that at the uh, at the end of certain chapters or certain books it may have a list of uh, recommended reading or references where the people in the book got some information from and uh, you have some students that they will do their requirements in the textbooks and then they will go back to those lists and they will actually on their own um, get books from the recommended reading in order to get more of an understanding of what they're doing. They may even do extra projects for extra credit. I mean, they're already doing what's required. They're already getting an A, but they're doing even more than that. They're doing what's not even asked of them. And so that's what, that's what excellence is. Whereas a mediocre student would be a, a student that, you know, goes to class and just wants to just meet the bare minimum requirement. You know, just always just looking at his watch and just when is this going to be over? And I just want to get through this class and not fail, not get an F, so my parents won't yell at me. I just want to get by. I just want to get this over with. And so just goes and endures every day. He may miss class, you know, every now and then, but then uh, he, he'll take his finals at the end of the semester and he'll get what they call a gentleman's seat. Just dead average, just nothing special. What not mind on other things when the teacher is teaching in class, and and just just dead average, like that. When and now I say dead average not because of ability. It may be somebody with above average ability, but that that's all that they just give. That's all that they want to do. That that's the difference between excellence. In mediocrity. Now, I bring this out, brothers and sisters, because that what we are going to be going through in this lesson and message is we are going to look at the radical call to discipleship that Yahusha gives. And what we're going to see is that in the mind of Yahusha and the mind of Yahuwah, likewise, praise Yahuwah that there's no real middle ground between excellence and mediocrity. That there's really no room, if we're going to call ourselves Talmudim, if we're going to call ourselves disciples of the Master, Yahusha, Mashiach, that what we're going to see through what we're going to go through today is it's either going to be one or the other. 
that it's either going to be excellence or it's going to be mediocrity. Praise Yahuwah. And what we're going to find is that for discipleship, because the greatest temptation that people in our realm face, I believe, the greatest temptation is not to go out and just live wickedly. Just go back to the world and just live wickedly. I don't believe the great, that that's the greatest temptation. I believe that the greatest temptation is the temptation to mediocrity. The temptation to just seek to fulfill the bare minimum requirements of this thing. Just to do the bare minimum to be saved. Just to do the bare minimum to attain unto eternal life. And brothers and sisters, that is a deception. Because Hasatan has many people deceived into believing that they're going to slide by, they're going to get by, that they're just, um, that they are meeting the bare minimum requirements of Yah when actually they're falling short. Praise Yahuwah. And they're not going to make it. And they're not going to be saved. And they're not going to attain unto eternal life. And that's scary, brothers and sisters. Yah wants us to strive for excellence. Not for mediocrity. Not for the bare minimum. Praise Yahuwah. Because what we're going to find is when it comes to discipleship, when it comes to truly being a Talmi, a disciple of the Master Yahusha Mashiach, excellence is the bare minimum requirement. Excellence is the bare minimum requirement. Say, so what do I need to do in order to be saved? What do I need to do to attain unto everlasting life? You see, and, and so in, in, in the mind of the natural man, he's looking for that bare minimum requirement. He's looking for that, that thing he can do. And we're going to look at an example of a man who did this now. That thing he can do whereby he can say, all right, I know I'm going to be saved now. I know I'm going to have eternal life. And then he can just go on. And then really get into and do things he really wants to do. Do things where his heart really is. Praise Yahuwah. Having the security in his mind and heart, I'm going to be saved. I'm going to have eternal life. I'm okay. Praise Yahuwah. But see, this man who had this in his heart, he had another thing coming when he, when he came to Yahusha. Praise Yahuwah. And so we're going to go ahead and get into the word now. And the first thing I want to look at is Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. We're talking about excellence or mediocrity. Excellence or mediocrity. Which is it going to be? Praise Yahuwah. Luke chapter 13. And before we really get into this, you know, one thing that has motivated me to bring forth this message, brothers and sisters, is that, and you've heard, some of you have heard me say this before, that I come out of the holiness churches and the holiness traditions when it comes to Christianity, that when I started in Christianity, of course, I came up in just a big denominational church, just a you know, big regular denominational church, and then when I called myself getting saved, started getting more serious with Yah, that uh, I started out in the Assemblies of God. And I went to some evangelical churches. I, I got with the Charismatics for a while. But then I settled in. I eventually kind of settled in with the apostolic and holiness churches. And I'm going to be honest with you, brothers and sisters, that yes, there was error in those churches as there is in, in all uh, churches you know, that are into the modern Christianity. But there are some things that were in that realm, in that um, what we called holiness, what we know now as Kodashah, praise Yahuwah. But there are some things in that realm that I miss since I've come over to this side, and since I've gotten amongst the 12 tribes of Yashra'al that are awakened, praise Yahuwah. There are some things that I miss because I find them to be absent in this realm. I find them to be absent amongst the uh, what, what they would call the Hebrew Israelite movement. 
Praise Yahuwah. And one of the things that I miss is that when I was in that realm, there was that constant push, that constant striving just to make sure that we're sure, sure that we make it, that we're going to be saved, that we're going to have eternal life. And just there is that constant spurring on just toward that mark. And when preachers would preach and how that uh, one, one preacher I sat under, he was a radio preacher, and how that he says that people would come to him and say, hey man, it don't take all that. It don't take all that what you're preaching. And now the preacher would respond back and say, no, no, it takes all that and more. There's another preacher I sat under and how he got up one time and see, we believe we had a pretty high standard. Praise Yahuwah. You know, when I look back at it, I mean, we weren't as high as you know we thought we were, but we believed we had a pretty high standard. And the preacher got up one time and he said, brothers and sisters, he said, less than this, less than this. I don't believe we're going to make it. Less than this. So there's a constant consciousness of just salvation, eternal life. Are we going to make it? Are we pressing? Are we going to get there? You know, that, that what do I need to do? What do I need to do? What do I need to lay aside? What do I need to repent from? That constant pressing. That constant consciousness. And then I come over on this side. I come over uh, on the you know so-called Hebrew Israelite side and... I see a lot of complacency. I see a lot of lethargy. I see a lot of mediocrity. I see a lot of this spirit of, well, you know, I'm, I'm keeping the commandments. I'm okay. So just no real need to press. No real need to strive. Just, oh, okay, yeah, I got it. Everything's fine. Just a, a lukewarmness. Praise Yahuwah. And so, uh, because of that, that I believe that Yah is using me to take what He has instilled in me, even even when I was back in the churches, because a lot of us in this realm have some good things that were instilled in us when we were in the churches. What we do, we eat the meat, we spit out the bones. Praise Yahuwah! But to take some of these good things that were instilled in me and to bring it into this realm, praise Yahuwah! To spur my brothers and sisters, on to excellence. Praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Because there is a need. There really is a need, brothers and sisters. Now, the first thing I want to read, Luke 13, I'm going to start in verse 22. It said, And he, talking about Yahusha, and he was going through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Yerushalayim. And someone said to him, Adonai, are there few who are being saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter in through the narrow gate, because many, I say to you, shall seek to enter in and shall not be able when once the Adon of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Adonai, Adonai, open for us, and he shall answer and say to you, I do not know you where you are, where you are from. Then you shall begin to say, We ate and drink in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he shall say, I say to you, I do not know you where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of unrighteousness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Yitzhak and Yaakov and all the Nebaim, all the prophets, in the reign of Elohim, and you in yourselves thrown outside. And they shall come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and sit down in the reign of Elohim, and see, there are last who shall be first, and there are first who shall be last. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, first thing is this word strive. Now, in the Greek, this word strive literally means agonize. It's like if you've ever seen somebody work out with weights before. You ever seen people that they're working out so so hard, so intensely that you know if they're a Gentile that they're all red in the face. And how, you know, they they, they got veins popping out of them. And how they may even just grunt real loud. 
because because they're just they're so intense and intensely involved in what they're doing. They're agonizing in order to get through their workout. That's what this word means, this Greek word for strive here. It means agonize to enter in at the straight gate. Now, if you go to any gym, praise Yahuwah, what you're going to find is that the, the majority of the people that are in there are not agonizing. Praise Yahuwah. They're, they're working out. You know, they're doing what they need to do, but as far as agonizing, praise Yahuwah. You, you may not see something like that unless you go to maybe a, 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 a gym, you know, for college football players or something where you have the coaches actually there pushing people. And, and you, you'll probably see a good number of people agonizing through their workouts. But you go to a commercial gym, especially those that cost a lot of money to go to, people that have a lot of money to go to, you won't see a lot of agonizing. You'll see people working out, but you won't see a lot of agonizing. You won't see a lot of veins in the neck. You won't see a lot of red faces. You won't hear a lot of loud grunts. Praise you. Maybe a little here and there. But here he's saying, agonize, strive to enter through the narrow gate. See, those going through the narrow gate, praise Yahuwah, they're agonizing. And see, you cannot agonize and be, and be mediocre. Praise Yahuwah. This is a clear division here between the excellent and the mediocre. It says, many shall seek to enter in and shall not be able. You remember me telling you how it, it is a massive deception of Hashatan. That, that you can somehow achieve this bare minimum requirement and then just go on with your life, do what you want to do and still be saved, still attain unto everlasting life. That's the deception that the, the many, he's talking about the many and the few, the many here, that's the deception that they're under. How do we know that? Because it says, many shall seek to enter in and shall not be able. These people are seeking to enter in the kingdom. They're seeking to enter in the kingdom, but they're not agonizing. They're seeking to enter into the kingdom, but they're on the broad way. And not the narrow way. But they are seeking. They do expect to be saved. Praise God. And so, as I continue, now, I read through this, but I, I, I do want to emphasize certain points here. Praise Yahuwah. That, as I said, verse 26, it says, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. In other words, there's this sense of surprise. Just like there's that sense of surprise in Matthew 7, where he says that not everyone who says unto me, Adonai, Adonai, to enter into the reign of the Shamaim, only he who does the will of my Father, which is in the Shamaim. Then he will come to me in that day. Say, Adonai, Adonai, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name cast out devils. In your name do many wonderful works. And he'll say to them, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. And so there's that sense of surprise. There's that sense of what? I didn't make it? What's going on here? And it's because people thought that, that, that this was all they needed to do to be saved. This was all they needed to do to have eternal life, and they actually needed this here. But they are deceived into striving for this. They are deceived into striving for mediocrity and not for excellence. Praise Yahuwah. And that's why he said, Many, many, I say to you, shall seek to enter in and shall not be able. See, brothers and sisters, I don't want that to be us. Praise Yahuwah. I want us to be the few. I want us to be uh, of the few that find eternal life. But we will only get there by striving for excellence. We won't get there by being mediocre. We won't get there by being just another brick in the wall. Praise Yahuwah. We won't get there by being average. Now, Luke chapter 14. As I said before, we're looking at Yahusha's radical call to discipleship. Luke 14, we're going to begin in verse 15. 
And it reads, When one of those who sat at the table with him heard this, he said to him, Baruch is he who eats bread in the reign of Elohim. But he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all is now ready. But one by one they all began making excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field and I need to go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to try them out. And I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife. Because of this, I am unable to come. And that servant came and reported this to his master. Then the master of the house, being raw, said to his servant, Hurry out into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and crippled and lame and blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out into the street corners and hedges and compel them to come in so that my house is filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Praise Yahuwah. Now, I'm going to read on, but I'm going to stop here for a moment. See, this is powerful because these are of those who were invited. This was a group of people that they were supposed to be the ones that were going to be saved. They were supposed to be the ones that were going to attain unto everlasting life. But look at their situation. Now, it, it's like Yahusha said in uh, a few chapters back that we just read, that... What is tripping these people up? And listen closely here. What is tripping these people up is not wickedness. They're not saying, um, I got to go and do me some drugs somewhere. Please have me excused. I got to go and lay with a bunch of whores. Please have me excused. I got to go out here and Rip off a bunch of people. Make a lot of money in doing it. Please have me excused. No. The things that they're asking to be excused over are not wicked things. They're normal, everyday things that just about everybody does. But they're out of balance. They had this thing out of perspective. They magnified these things to be just as much or more important than the matters of the kingdom. And that's why they missed it. Praise Yahuwah. Not because of wickedness, but because of mediocrity. Praise Yahuwah. Because of just being average, just being on the broad road. Praise Yahuwah. Now, as we go on, because this right here sets the stage for what he's, what he's getting ready to teach. Verse 25, And large crowds were going with him, and turning, he said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters and his own life too, he is unable to be my Talmud. And whoever does not bear his stake and come after me is unable to be my Talmud. Praise Yahuwah. So that right there sets the stage. That right there sets the standard. And that right there shows you that it, uh, I meant what I said when I said the bare minimum standard for being a Talmud, a disciple, is excellence. Because just reading this right here, you can't get away with anything but excellence according to what he's saying here. Now, I know we have non-Messianics that uh, they try to say, oh, Yahushua was a violator of Torah because he says, hate your parents. Praise Yahuwah. But we got to keep this in Torah context. The Yah says in the Torah that if you have two wives, one beloved, one hated, that, uh, and if, if the, the son, if the son that you had through the hated one is truly the firstborn, and then you have one after him that's the son of the beloved, you're not to make the son of the beloved the, the firstborn ahead of the true firstborn, even because he was born of the one that was hated. Praise Yahuwah. 
And so that shows you right there that the word hate can be used in a relative sense and not in an absolute sense. Praise Yahuwah. In other words, the man couldn't have hated that woman too much. He had a child by her. Praise Yahuwah. It just meant that in comparison with that other woman, that that other woman was so much more greatly beloved that in comparison to that other woman, that that woman was hated. And so that's a Torah context we can set for even this right here. That if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children, brothers, sisters, and his own life too. Praise Yahuwah. So in other words, in comparison with our love for Yah and Yahusha, praise Yahuwah, that it is a form of hatred because it's that much less our love for other people or even self is that much less than our love for Yah and Yahusha. Praise Yahuwah. And so that's foolishness, the idea that he's teaching you to hate your parents in an absolute sense. Praise Yah. And whoever does not bear his stake and come after me is unable to be his Talmud. Praise Yahuwah. You can't be mediocre. You can't be average and, and you bear your stake daily. You're just not going to do it. You're not going to choose to do it. It's too inconvenient. Praise Yahuwah. It's too uncomfortable. Now verse 28. For who of you wanting to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether his possessions will finish it? Otherwise, when he has laid the foundation and is unable to finish it, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was unable to finish. Or what sovereign going to fight against another sovereign does not sit down first and take counsel whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So then, every one of you who does not give up all that he has is unable to be my Talmud. The salt is good, but if the salt becomes tasteless, with what shall it be seasoned? It is not fit for land, nor for manure. They throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And he says this because not everybody had ears to hear. Not everybody could receive what he was saying. Praise Yahuwah. So one of, the, one of the last things he says is that he who does not give up all that he has. Now when he says give up all that he has, that means that you, you lay no claim to which you have. You may not necessarily sell out in the physical sense. Because we do see that there were believers that had homes, had houses, had money. You know, that uh, there was the beloved Gaius who uh, Yochanan wrote to. And I believe it was Second John and uh, Gaius and how he was known for showing hospitality to the Kodashim. This man is rich. This man had some money. And so, but when he says, you can't be my Talmudim if you don't give up all that you have. See, this man, he gave up all that he had. Just in his mind and in his heart, he laid no claim to all that he had. But it was always available to the work of Yah and to the esteem of Yah. Praise Yahuwah. And see, you have to be at the level of excellence to live like that. Especially if you have something now. Praise Yah. Because we're, we're getting ready to see that. We're getting ready to see that. In just a couple more passages. Luke chapter 9. Spending a lot of time in Luke. This message. Luke chapter 9. Talking about excellence or mediocrity. Excellence or mediocrity. Now, Luke 9, and verse 57. And it came to be as they journeyed on the way that someone said to him, Adonai, I shall follow you wherever you go. And Yahusha said to him, The foxes have holes and the birds of the Shamaim nest, but the ben of Adam has nowhere to lay his head. And he said to another, Follow me. And he said, Adonai, let me first go and bury my father. And Yahusha said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and announce the reign of Elohim. And another also said, Adonai, I shall follow you, but let me first say goodbye to those in my house. But Yahusha said to him, No one having put his hands to the plow and looking back is fit 
for the reign of Elohim. Praise Yahuwah. This is a pretty radical call. Calling people to lay down just normal things. Normal things that normal people would normally do. He's calling people to lay it down at once when he gave that call of discipleship. Lay it down. Follow me. And the excuses they made, he didn't accept them. Praise Yah. said, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the reign of Elohim. You know, Lot's wife looked back. What happened to her? She has turned to a pillar of salt. Praise Yahuwah. And so we see that, I mean, there's no looking back when you answer the call of Yah. Praise Yah. Abraham, our father, he's a prime example of one who did not look back. Yah brought him out of a, a family and out of a culture of idolatry. Praise Yah. And he moved forward when Yah told him to get away from his kindred, get out of his country. Praise Yah and go to a land which I will show you. And he went and he did not look back. And the rest is history. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. He could have went back when he was told to offer up his son Yitzhak on the altar. He could have said, ah, this is too much. Forget this. Gone back to his father's house. But no, he had to press forward. Hallelujah. Now, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Because one area that men were severely tried in in Yahushua's day, and it even continues unto this day too, and that is in the area of money. I've heard it said before that Yahushua spoke about money more than he spoke about heaven and hell combined. And so I've heard that said. I haven't checked it myself. Maybe some of you all have out there in YouTube land. Praise Yahuwah. But the point of the matter is that Yahusha addressed the issue of money often. Praise Yah, because that's one thing that was holding people back from serving Yah. Even the leaders talked about how the Pharisees were covetous, love silver. Now, Mark chapter 10, verse 17 said, And as he was proceeding on the way, one came running and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit everlasting chai, everlasting life? And Yahushua said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except one, Allahim. You know the commands. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Respect your father and mother. And he answering said to him, Teacher, all these I have watched over from my youth. And Yahushua, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One you lack, go sell all you possess and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in the Shamayim. And come, follow me, taking up the stake. But he, being sad at this word, went away grieved, for he had many possessions. Now, I've, had, I've heard it said before, based upon Matthew's account, that Yahushua wasn't calling him to sell all that he had. He just said, sell what you have and give to the poor. Now, he could have you know, hung on to some of it. You know, he didn't tell him to sell all that he had. But look at Mark's account. It's even more definitive. He says that sell all that you possess. All you possess and give to the poor. And you shall have treasure in the Shamaim and come follow me taking up the state. Now, um, we know that, you know, we look throughout the book of Acts, we see that everybody was not called to do this thing here. Sell all of their possessions. Praise Yahuwah. But this man was. And there's a reason why this man was. Yahushua knew that, that this was an area this man struggled in. And so this was something that he was going to have to uh, be delivered from in order to attain unto eternal life. Praise Yah. And so, this man is a good example of mediocrity. This man was, he was a generally good fellow here in the Hebrew culture. You know, that he kept all the rest of the commandments from his youth up. Just a generally good fellow, but he could not let go of the money. Even if Yahushua may have asked him for a large sum of money, and he was able to hang on to uh, some of it. He might have done it. But Yahushua called him to 
Give it all up. Sell all that you have. Give to the poor. Come follow me, taking up the stake. And he could not do it. Praise Yahuwah. See, I want to contrast this with another man, praise Yahuwah, that did not demonstrate mediocrity like this rich young ruler, but demonstrated excellence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But before I do, I want to read more on this particular passage. It says, And Yahushua, looking around, said to his Talmudim, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter into the reign of Elohim. And the Talmudim were astonished at his words. And Yahushua, responding to them again, said to them again, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter into the reign of Elohim. It is easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the reign of Elohim. And they were immeasurably astonished, saying among themselves, Who then is able to be saved? And looking at them, Yahushua said, With men it is impossible, but not with Elohim. For with Elohim all is possible. And Kepha began to say to him, See, we have left all and have followed you. Yahushua said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for the sake of me and the good news, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come everlasting chai. But many who are first shall be last in the last first. Praise Yahuwah. So this shows right here that if you do strive for excellence in serving Yah, you will receive an excellent reward. Praise Yahuwah. A hundredfold return in this life and in that which is to come with persecutions, of course. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, praise Yahuwah. That it just shows the goodness of Yahuwah. It shows how how good he is, how Yahuwah knows how to make it worth it all in the end. Praise Yah. And that he will do for those who strive to enter in at the straight gate. Praise Yah. Now, let's turn to Luke 19. I want to show you a good example when it comes to finances, when it comes to money, of a man who demonstrated excellence and not mediocrity. Luke 19, starting in verse 1, And having entered, he was passing through Jericho, and see a man named Zechai, and he was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he, seeking to see who Yahushua was, but was unable because of the crowd, for he was small in stature. And having run ahead, he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, because he was about to pass by. And as Yahushua came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zechai, hurry and come down, for I have to stay at your house today. And he hurried and came down and received him rejoicing. And seeing it, they all grumbled, saying, He has gone in to stay with a man who is a sinner. But Zechai stood up and said to the Adon, Look, Adonai, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have taken whatever from anyone by false accusation, I repay fourfold. And Yahushua said to him, Today deliverance has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham, for the ben of Adam has come to seek and to save what was lost. Praise Yahuwah. So money was no object to this man. This is a rich man too. But money was no object. He just wanted eternal life. He just wanted to be right with Yah. To the point where he gave half his goods to the poor and he agreed to, to um, pay restitution to everybody he ripped off. Praise Yahuwah. But he was rejoicing. It was no skin off of his nose. And so this man demonstrated excellence and not mediocrity like the rich young ruler. Now Luke 21. We're going to look at another individual that demonstrated excellence. Luke 21. Luke 21, starting in verse 1. And looking up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury, and he saw a certain poor widow putting in two small coins. And he said, Truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all, for all these out of their excess 
have put in offerings for Elohim, but she out of her poverty has put in all that she had to live on. You see, that was excellence in the sight of Yah. Praise Yahuwah. Because he's rich man giving these big offerings. It was it was uh, it was impressive in the eyes of man, but not in the eyes of Yah. Because they just had so much left over after they gave. This woman had nothing left over after she gave, and she was Baruch as a result. Praise Yah. Alright, now back to chapter ten of Luke. Back to chapter ten. And here we're going to see even from the Torah itself that there is no room for mediocrity in the kingdom of Yah. In Luke chapter 10, we're going to start in verse 25. It said, And a certain one learned in the Torah stood up trying him and saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit everlasting chai, everlasting life? And he said to him, what has been written in the Torah? How do you read it? And he answering said, You shall love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this and you shall live. Now let me stop here. Praise Yahuwah. So here, here we hear the greatest command in the Torah. To love Yahuwah or Elohim with all of our heart, our being, and our strength, and our mind. The greatest command in the Torah. You know what? You cannot fulfill that command and be mediocre. You cannot fulfill that command and just strive to meet a bare minimum standard that you think you need to attain to in order to be saved. In order to attain unto everlasting life. You can't do it. Because the command the bare minimum standard is to love them with all our heart, all our mind, all our being, all our strength. Praise Yahuwah. That's excellence, brothers and sisters. To love Him half-heartedly is mediocrity. And that's those on the broad road. They loved Him, yes, but they loved Him half-heartedly. They did not love Him wholeheartedly. They loved Him half-heartedly. Heartedly. But see, they are deceived into believing they could love him half-heartedly and still be saved. Because some way, somehow, they met some bare minimum requirement. And that's all they needed to do. So once they... See, I'm going to tell you something that has destroyed. That, that has destroyed the minds of many. See, the Christian religion, in many ways, has just destroyed the minds of many. Because in its origins, and when I say Christian religion... I mean, the established Christian religion, which began with Catholicism, branched off into Protestantism. But there was this idea that you could be a regular lay person, regular everyday person, and be saved. But then there were people who were set apart who would go above and beyond, and these people were really saved. The monks, the nuns, the friars, the priests the reverends. And so there is this, this hierarchy system where the, there were people that were expected to really lay it all down for Yah and just give their life to Yah completely. And then there's just the regular people who could just live regular lives, but hey, you know, we're still going to be saved. And so the, that has carried on in Christianity even for those that broke away from the Catholic Church into Protestantism, there's still this idea that, yeah, you have certain people out there that really give it up for Yah, really lay it down for Yah, but you just have just regular people, just regular everyday people, just live regular everyday lives, and hey, they're going to be saved too. Praise Yah. So there's not that single standard for discipleship that Yahusha lays down. Praise Yahuwah. But it's almost like a, a, a tiered system where you could reach the bare minimum, be a regular everyday person, be saved, and then you may be someone in the ministry or you may be a missionary or someone who's just really giving it all up and so that, you know, that you're going to be saved also, but you may have a lot more rewards. But just the person on the bottom of the rung is someone who, uh, you know, they go to church, you know, they may sin, 
you know, every day and whatnot. But, you know, they're going to be saved. They just won't have the rewards that these people that have really dedicated themselves unto Yah are going to have. That has destroyed the minds of many. Taking away that single standard that Yahusha lays for being a Talmud. Praise Yahuwah. He calls us all to lay it all down. Praise Yahuwah. He calls us all to deny ourselves, take up our stake daily, and follow Him. That's bare minimum just to be His Talmud. Praise Yahuwah. And Yah, from the very beginning, has called us all, every single one of us that would come into covenant with Him, to love Him with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our being, all of our strength. Yah wants it all. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yah. And he'll accept nothing less. Now, this man, when he heard this, Yahusha said, Yahusha said, do this and you shall live. Verse 29 says, but he wanting to declare himself righteous, said to Yahusha, and who is my neighbor? In other words, this man was probably thinking to himself, ah, is that all we need to do? Ha, I got this. You know, who's my neighbor? He say, see, he's wanting to justify himself. Wanting to declare himself right. But look at, listen to what Yahusha says to him. Verse 30. In replying, Yahusha said, A certain man was going down from Yerushalayim to Yericho and fell among robbers, who, both stripping and beating him, went away, leaving him half dead. And by a coincidence, a certain Kohen was going down that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side, and likewise a Luite also, when he came to the place and seeing, passed by on the other side. But a certain Shomeronite, a Samaritan, journeying came upon him, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and having placed him on his own beast. He brought him to an inn and looked after him. And going out on the next day, he took out two pieces of silver and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Look after him, and whatever more you spend, I shall repay when I return. Who then of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the robbers? And he said, He who showed compassion on him, then Yahusha said to him, Go and do likewise. In other words, this thing wasn't as, as easy as this lawyer, this one learned in the Torah. It wasn't as easy as this man thought. This man, oh, who's my neighbor? Yeah, I, I got this. Praise Yah. But see, the thing is that this Luite and this Kohen that passed this man by, no doubt, See, they were probably thinking to themselves, oh, I, I don't want to be made unclean by this man. I want to stay pure for Yah. And see, that's where, see, people don't put this in context. You know, that we saw this in Christianity. We thought these men just passed by, like, I don't care about him and whatnot. No, I mean, these men probably thought they were doing something good. Huh? I'm not going to be defiled by him. I'm not going to make myself unclean before Yah. And so they had the mindset that a lot of people, a lot of the Yahudim of that day would have had concerning this man. But this foreigner, Shomeronite, Samaritan, a dog in the eyes of the Yahudim, that he was the one that stopped and showed this man compassion. He was the one that showed excellence and not mediocrity. Wasn't just another brick in the wall. Wasn't just someone who was just going to pass him by, praise Yah, and think they were okay with Yah. Praise Yah. Now, uh, Luke 17, I want to show you another foreigner, another Shomeronite, another Samaritan, another dog, if you will, praise Yahuwah, that demonstrated excellence whereby others, even who were of the true seed, demonstrated mediocrity. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 17. We're going to start in verse 12. 
said, And as he was entering into a certain village, he was met by ten leprous men who stood at a distance. And they lifted up their voices, saying, Yahusha, Adonai, have compassion on us. And having seen, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the Kohanim. And it came to be as they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned praising Elohim with a loud voice. And he fell down upon his face at his feet, giving thanks to him, and he was a Shomer and I. He was a Samaritan. And Yahushai answering said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Was no one found to return to give praise to Elohim except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your belief has made you well. Praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And so we see this foreigner, someone who was not even of the seed. Look at him. Look at how he demonstrates excellence. Look at how he not only receives the, the barakah, but returns to give Elohim thanks with a loud voice. Praise Yahuwah. You know, there are, there are certain people we read about in the scriptures, brothers and sisters, that... Uh, it shows just how Yah felt about them. We read about Dawood and how he was a man after Yah's own heart. How much Yah loved Dawood. Praise Yahuwah. You know, we know in Christianity they teach, oh, God loves everybody. God loves everybody. But there are certain people that are singled out in the scriptures who it said that Yah loved. Praise Yahuwah. Even Yochanan, it said that the Talmud, the disciple that Yahusha loved, and how Abraham was called the friend of Elohim. Praise Yah. See, these were men that were not mediocre. These were men that were just not average. These were men that had an excellent relationship with Yah. These were men who excelled in their dedication and in their service toward Yah. Praise Yahuwah. These were men who gave their all. These were men who ate, slept, and breathed. Yah! Why can't we do that? What's holding us back from that? What's holding us back from walking in that level of excellence? Praise Yahuwah. See, Yah doesn't want it to be a thing where you have somebody, you have an individual every now and then that will do that. Someone like Enoch. Seventh from Adam, who who he pleased Yah so much, Yah took him, Yah translated him, took him off of this earth. Praise Yahuwah. But Yah wills that everybody be that way. Everybody could be, if they chose. Not all men choose to be that way. Praise Yahuwah. That that shouldn't be just an out, out of the ordinary special thing. But see, that's what Yah that is Yah's call. That's what Yah calls us all to. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. But see, this is a lesson learned here. Yahusha says that, you know, don't you don't you boast in being of the seed of Abraham. Yah is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Praise Yahuwah. I'm going to tell you what, you know, we when we first started our uh, podcasting, internet ministry, the, there was a, a brother that was following us for a while, and we lost him. And the reason why we lost him is this brother that he was uh, that that he was real down on the Gentiles and and you know real proud of being a Hebrew Israelite? And I made the statement because this brother was a part of a group now that spoke against the immersion of the Ruach. See, we here at Kodesh Nation we believe in the immersion of the Ruach with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues, just like the apostles received it. Praise Yahuwah. There's an old apostolic preacher. I remember he used to preach and say, if you didn't get it like the apostles got it, you ain't got it. Was he wrong? Praise Yahuwah. But see, the thing is, I made this statement on the podcast. I said that Yah is bypassing some of these Israelites. He's bypassing them. In going into some of these, these disobedient Israelites, these Israelites that reject the Ruach, these Israelites that are stubborn and stiff-necked, Yah is bypassing them 
going into these Christian churches and filling some of these Gentiles with the Ruach. This man got so mad and upset that he, he stopped listening to our podcast. He cut us off. He couldn't bear that. He cut us off. It's just like those people who Yahusha spoke before. Praise Yah. And talking about how that there are many lepers in the days of Naaman, but not one of them were cleansed. Many lepers in Yashra'al, but not one of them were cleansed except Naaman, a Syrian. Praise Yah. Many widows in the, in the days of Eliyahu. Praise Yah. But none of them Eliyahu was sent to except that woman of Zarephath, Gentile woman. And those women, those, those people were so burned up. Those people were so mad. After Yahushua said that before him, they were ready to throw him off a cliff. They said he had to run through them in order to get away from them. Praise Yah. And of course, in Christianity, of course, our, our mindset when we hear that is, you know, he just, he just kind of just floated on through and then ran his way. But it said he ran through them. Praise Yah. I wouldn't doubt if he ran over some of them and elbowed a few in the chin and pushed them over and ran through them. Praise Yah. I said he ran through them. Running back in football, he runs through the line. Praise Yahuwah. He ran through them. So, you know, it doesn't say exactly which it was. Praise Yah. But he got out of there. See, it wasn't his time. It wasn't his time to die. Be thrown off a cliff like that. Hallelujah. But see, the point being, Yah is no respecter of persons. Praise Yah. See, see, it's no secret when you get into a movement like this, when you get into a movement like the Israelite movement, praise Yahuwah, and don't make any mistake about it, we are nationalistic. We are strongly nationalistic. We love our people. Praise Yahuwah. We uplift our people. The focal point of our ministry is our people. Praise Yahuwah. But you're always going to have radical elements in a movement like this. Praise Yahuwah. You're always going to have race mongers in a movement like this. And I know because, see, I used to fellowship with some people that were the carbon copy of this movement. If y'all ever heard of the, the white Israelite movement, white folk that believe they're Israel, British Israel, or Brit Am, as they call it. Praise Yahuwah. And I've been around people like that. And so there are people like that that are just nice, friendly people and, and you know, wouldn't do you any harm. And then you have your radical elements of that movement that are race mongers, that are real hardcore and don't like any other race or nationality of people but their own. Well, we have that in our movement. Praise Yah. And we have people that if you're not radical like them, they don't want to have much to do with you. They don't want to talk to you much, especially if you confront them. Especially if you tell them you believe they're wrong. You believe they're out of balance. They don't want to hear that. Praise Yahuwah. But see, Yah is showing right here. Don't you get puffed up now. Because, I mean, there are some Gentiles now. There are some of those who are on of the sea that are going to demonstrate excellence. Praise Yah, and they're going to be chosen over and above those who are of the seed that choose mediocrity, that choose the broad road. Praise Yahuwah, that choose to half step with Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Yah has always demonstrated that. Remember how I talked about Caleb and, and Yahusha, son of Nun, and how they were different. They had an excellent spirit. Praise Yahuwah, as opposed to the rest of the ten spies who chose mediocrity, who chose to, uh, who chose unbelief. They had an excellent spirit. You know what? One of those men, Caleb, he was a Kenizzite. Caleb the Kenizzite. He was of another, he was of another seed, another nation. But he was an Israelite by covenant. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. And so, brothers and sisters, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna wrap this up. Yeah couple uh, passages in Revelation. Turn to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Now, it reads... And to the messenger of the assembly in Sardis write, He who has the seven ruach, Ruachoth of 
Elohim and the seven stars says this. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but are dead. But you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete before Elohim. Remember then how you have received and heard and watch and repent. If then you do not wake up, I shall come upon you as a thief, and you shall not know at all what hour I come upon you. Nevertheless, you have a few names in Sardis who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be dressed in white robes, and I shall by no means blot out his name out of the book of Chai, but I shall confess his name before my father and before his messengers. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach says to the assemblies. Now, I want to point out something about this assembly in Sardis, where it says that you have a few names in Sardis. Now, these are the ones that were striving for excellence. You have a few names in Sardis that have not defiled their garments. Praise Yahuwah. And they shall walk with me in white because they are worthy. Now, they had a reputation they are alive, but they were dead. And so what's interesting is the fact that they were dead, that automatically these people had defiled garments. See, some people think you can be dead or even half dead and not have defiled garments. Praise Yahuwah. No, I mean, they were, they were dead. They had a reputation of being alive. They may have been emotionally alive. They may have been very lively in their praise and in their worship. But they were dead. They weren't keeping the commandments. They weren't loving one another like that. Praise Yahuwah. And I've been in places like that. I've been in places that had lively praise in worship. Places where they would be loud and just loud, foot stomping, hand clapping, preaching, and whatnot. Very lively. But, you know, folks were mean spirited. Folks didn't love one another. Folks always suspicious of one another. Just folks falsely accusing one another, gossiping and backbiting against one another. Praise Yahuwah. And just wasn't a lie. People didn't, people were unwilling to deny themselves. People were unwilling to suffer in the flesh for the sake of just saving their relationships with their brothers and sisters. See, that's dead in the eyes of Yah. That's dead and that's defilement in the eyes of Yah. And that happens quite often in our land and even amongst us, brothers and sisters. Praise Yahuwah. And so they had a reputation that they were alive, but they were dead. But some of them were alive, truly alive. Some of them, a few of them, did not defile their garments. See, that's who we need to be, brothers and sisters. We need to be of the few that have not defiled our garments. And we'll only get there by striving for excellence, brothers and sisters, just like these people here. Now, as we go on in chapter 3 of Revelation... Jump to verse 14. Verse 14 says, And to the messenger of the assembly in Laodicea, write, The, the Omain, the trustworthy and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Yahuwah, says this, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth because you say rich I am and I am made rich and need none at all. And do not know that you are wretched and pitiable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you become rich in white garments, so that you become dressed so that the shame of your nakedness might not be shown and anoint your eyes with ointment so that you see. As many as I love, I reprove and discipline. So be ardent and repent. See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I shall come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I shall give to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach says to the assemblies. Praise Yahuwah. So here's the money thing again, brothers and sisters. Praise Yahuwah. 
and when when Yahusha was speaking about the parable of the four soils, he mentioned that third soil. And that's the, the age we live in today. We truly live in a Laodicean age in modern America. That third soil where that seed was planted, but the, the cares of this life, deceitfulness of riches, lusts of other things that choked out that plant so that it did not bring forth fruit unto perfection. It brought forth fruit, but it brought forth green fruit. It began to bring forth fruit, but that fruit could not come to maturity to the point where it could be consumed because of the cares of this life, deceitfulness of riches, lust of other things, because they fell into mediocrity and did not strive for excellence and somehow, some way, believe that they could still be saved in that condition. Just like those on the broad road, many shall strive to enter in, and they shall not be able. Praise Yahuwah. That's why it's only going to be a few, brothers and sisters. It's only going to be a few. Yahusha says, many are called, but few chosen. Praise Yah. There's a brother who I talked to one time who said that that, sh that, that actually says, many are, many are called, but few have chosen. I don't know if that's so, but that does sound interesting. Praise Yahuwah, because it is a choice. It truly is a choice, brothers and sisters, of whether we are going to strive, to agonize, to enter in at the straight gate, or whether we're going to coast. If we coast, then uh, just by default, we're going to be on that wide road. We're going to be on the road that most everybody else is on. Praise Yahuwah. And I'm going to tell you what, sometimes Yah will put you places just to try you, just to test you. Praise Yahuwah. That you could be amongst people that are striving. And then Yah could put you amongst people that are not striving. Amongst people that are mediocre. Amongst people, praise Yahuwah, that are just, you know, content where they are. Not, not, not striving, not agonizing to enter in. And Yah could put you around people like that for a test. To see, will you let yourself be dragged down? Or will you seek to bring others up? Will you become mediocre too? Praise Yahuwah. Will you lose your striving too? Will you lose your consecration and your dedication too? And conform to the norm. Just be another brick in the wall. Praise Yahuwah. Or will you continue in His Word that you may be, may be His Talmud indeed, indeed? And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Praise Yahuwah. And see, that's, that's where we have to be, brothers and sisters, where we don't let anybody else affect our walk. We don't become mediocre because we're around people that are mediocre. Praise Yahweh. But we strive whether or not anybody else around us is striving. Because that's the only way we're going to make it, brothers and sisters. That's the only way that we are going to enter in by the narrow way and by the narrow gate. Because few... We'll find it. Yah said that I will take you one of a city, two of a family. Few are going to find it. Are we of the many or are we of the few? Many are called, few chosen. Praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, we're talking about excellence or mediocrity. And I pose it as a question. Excellence or mediocrity? Mediocrity. And I put it like that. Because those are really our only two choices. We don't have an in-between choice where, you know, we don't want to be mediocre. Because mediocre people are lukewarm and Yah will spit them out of His mouth. But then we don't necessarily want to be excellent either because, you know, I mean, there are other things we want to do in life besides serve Yah. I mean, so let, let's meet the bare minimum requirement, serve Yah. Once we've met the requirement, let's move on and just do some things we really like. Just do what we want to do. Let's find a balance between excellence and mediocrity. Brothers and sisters, there is no balance. There is no middle ground. It's one or the other. Praise <laughs> Yahuwah. Unless you're just flat out wicked. Now that's a third option. But I'm talking about those in our realm. I'm talking about those who expect to be saved. Those who expect to rise to everlasting life. Praise Yahuwah. So to those, 
to people that are not just flat out wicked, to those who, who, who are seeking to enter in, these are your only two choices. Excellence or mediocrity. You choose excellence, then you will rise to eternal life. You choose mediocrity, you'll be damned. And worse than that, you'll be damned thinking that you're going to rise to eternal life. We don't want that, brothers and sisters. Praise Yahuwah. We want it said of us like Yahusha said of those few in Sardis. That he said, I will in no wise blot their name out of the book of life. That they will walk with me in white for they are worthy. We want that to be said of us, brothers and sisters. Praise Yahuwah. And so, that is all for now. Let's strive for excellence. Because really, it's our only choice. And it's the bare minimum standard for serving Yah. And with that, I will say, Shalom.